Hi everyone, welcome back to part two of the materialized how-to videos. In this video, I wanted to show you a more advanced way of implementing the effect so that's more efficient. So basically, uh, the idea is once you actually need to run the effect, you create the material instance, run the effect, then turn the material back to the normal material. So that way, whenever the effect is not in use, uh, you don't have the uh, effect of the, the shader overhead uh, running all the time uh, when you're actually using the effect. So this is a more efficient way of using the effect and it's actually the way I, I like to use it myself. So uh, as an example, continue from our last video when we created the uh, instance and, and started driving with the timeline. Uh, what I want to do is, normally I would take this and collapse this down to a function, but since this has a timeline, the timeline can only be done through the uh, event graph. So we'll have to do this as a custom event. Before we get to that, let's go ahead and do materialize timeline. I want to change this a little bit to um, call this materialize up. And then I want to add a second track called materialize down. And then I want to set this one. Uh, add key and make this one at time zero, uh, one. And then this one at time one, zero. So essentially we have a, a warp up and warp down function. All right, so I got that created. Let's go back to the event graph. And what I want to do is uh, disconnect the begin play. We'll move that out of the way for now. Right click and go to add event and we'll add a uh, custom event and call this one warp up. Uh, warp up. And I want to do another one called warp down. Warp down. And I should probably zoom in so you guys can see this a little better for the video. And Maximize my space there a little bit more. All right, so basically what I want to do is uh, whenever we, we begin, I want to actually um, make sure I have the material set to the default material to start off with. We used to have it connected to the material instance we created, so now I want to make it back to the regular material, so we're good on that. And then go back to the blueprint, and whenever we actually want to start doing the warp up, we do a material instance dynamic like we did previously and then once that is uh, created we store it and then we begin to play the timeline and then during that timeline we update the parameter with the material lights up and the value now what we want to do is when we get done with it we want to change the material back so what we want to do is uh, um, create a set material um, the static mesh component hit this and when we finish, we want to go to uh, the original material that we had, which was this table round. All right, got that selected. And then I'll go ahead and assign it to here. So basically, it'll run that timeline. And once it's uh, done, it'll finish that off. And I will go ahead and I like to uh, set this uh, back to blank. So I'll go ahead and set this. This should null that out. And... That's it. So now whenever we call this warm up, warp up function, it should uh, drive the instance. First, it'll create it, attach it to model, drive it up. And once the effect is finished, it will go ahead and replace the material back to the original one. So that's for the warp up. I want to do the same thing for the uh, warp down. So we'll just literally copy this and move it away. And here we go. And there you go. Now we have warp down, except we want to use the materialize down and it said materialize up. And there, now we have the down function. And just for fun, <clears throat> when we first warp in, I want to go ahead and uh, call warp up. And then I want to do a delay, just so we can see this working. Uh, so it takes one second to warp up. We'll delay it. Uh, one second past that, so one second plus one second, we'll go to two second delay, and then we'll do the warp down. And there we go. So what we should see now is once we start the level, the table will uh, first, it comes in with its regular material, then we start the warp up, and then uh, it sits at the warp up uh, finished, and once the warp up is finished, after a second, changes the material back, then we wait another second um, 
for uh, just to sit idle for the delay to, to re-trigger. And after that delay is to trigger, we go back to warp down, which goes back and repeats a process of uh, creating another dynamic material, assigning it, playing the timeline, and then after the uh, timeline is done, reapply the original uh, material back to it. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if all that talk really did what it's supposed to do. So we'll hit play. Up, oh, one second, and then we should have it go down. And there we go. And then the original material is back on. So you may not want that happen on the uh, warp down. You might want to keep it uh, deleted or move the actor. But you could do that, whatever you want. The idea is there to show you how to, to expand on that. But that's the basic and quick idea of setting up the material to be replaced during runtime in the blueprint. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave it below. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.